Here's a great book on Tico pottery. It was from an exhibition at the Erie Art Museum in 1989. It's written by Sharon Darling. It has a shape book, has much information, really good information about Tico. The marks on Tico are really straightforward. There's really only one die stamp mark. Looks something like this, only without the box around it. More on that later. Here's a good example of it. Here's another one that has multiple, usually there are multiple impressions. This one has two, they probably put two or three sometimes, um, just in case the glaze would cover them like it does on, on this one right here. This is kind of a distinctive bottom where they have a wide foot ring and then a, a recessed area in the center. On forms without a flat bottom, this has two marks. You could read them, this one anyway. This one's really hard to tell what it is. Here's a mark used on Tico tile and also on some of the gardenware, a big block mark. Here, here's a mark you'll find on newly made Tico. It's really not the same product at all. This is a piece fake from the ground up. It's hand thrown. All Tico was cast um, in molds. So a hand thrown piece of Tico is an anomaly that didn't exist. The mark on this has a box around the Tico mark, which doesn't, they used in all of their advertising but doesn't show up on the bottom of pots. The box is gone in the die stamp. Here's some other nice forms. Showing again the, the wide foot ring and the recessed area in the center with the marks. It's a nice one called the rocket ship vase. Very little area to mark, but usually among the glaze strips you can find it. Again, a wide foot ring, in this case a square, with multiple impressions of the die stamp. This is an adventuring glaze, crystalline glaze that they used briefly. Nice, it's a clear mark. Here's an example of a piece with a brown glaze. They had quite a variety of colors that they used. Similar bottom, wide foot ring, recessed area, multiple marks. Here's a nice variety of their very popular matte green.